Okay, so the name of the game today is installing pneumatic down pressure on the planter. So you can see I've got spring down force uh, is what it had, what it came with. And I have since bought a set of used airbags and uh, the, all the bracketry and stuff to make this pneumatic down pressure. Um, so I did some research on AgTalk before I started it. And people had talked about retrofitting these, but I didn't know. And they said it would work on a Max Merge 2 unit, which is what these are. But what I didn't know is if it would work with the true count. And it does, but man, it is close. So uh, I've ran the row unit up and down. And you uh, luckily there's enough slack in here. It never actually touches the clutch. And if it did, there would be uh, plenty of wiggle room in there. So what I'm going to do is sort of show you what we have to do to get from this to this. Uh, then we're going to run the air tubing to all of it and go from there. So stay tuned. All right, first thing we're going to do is buzz these old springs off, get them out of the way. Next thing we're going to do is pull the bolts out of this uh, tube support and we're going to install that cast iron bracket. So these are carriage bolts, they just buzz out. Okay, so we'll go ahead and slide this in behind the hex shaft. Run my bolts through. Just for now, the sporty part will be getting the nut on the back side of it. Little help. Okay, once you got them shoved through, you can reach the other side with your fingers. Just spin the bolt on. Uh, the impact won't get on those, so you do have to tighten them with a wrench. Uh, from the back side, a ratchet wrench is a big help here. Okay, last thing before we tighten up these two, take the big hog, put it in the bottom, make sure the hole's lined up. Uh, same drill, put the nut on the back, tighten it down, and that's it for the bracket. Okay, next thing will be to mount up the, uh, the bracket that the airbag goes on. So note that if you have a chain-driven planter, bracket goes like this, between the chain, like that. If you had a ProDrive planter with a cable, they actually go, to flip it around, they would go like that, and the pro drive runs underneath this thing, uh, but it makes contact with the chain. So yeah, that's the only difference for a chain-driven planter. We're gonna run it backwards. Uh, the other thing, at least, so this was a takeoff from a 1770 is where this kit actually came from. So you've got two bushings. You've got a bigger one and a smaller one. Uh, the one in the bottom is kind of an elongated elongated hole and it's narrower the smaller bushing is the only one that will fit into that so the the two top ones will take the bigger bushing the ones on the bottom will take the smaller and you'll notice I'll run that through there through the hole in the parallel arm you'll notice that I've still got these uh, and if when you took your springs off you've got a, a shit pile of these uh, I think there was probably supposed to be a helper spring at some point on this kit. I'm not going to use that, but I am going to keep one of these on here, on the bottom one at least, because it works as a, a kind of a washer-spacer combo because these bolts are too long. So put that on there. Get that started. Up top. Same deal. Bushing and a bigger bolt, or bigger bushing and a bolt. And I'll tighten all that down. We'll be good to go. Well, the other side too, of course. Okay, so this clutch, there you can just see it, only has one spacer between it and the hanger bearing. And it is dangerously close. To this now I've picked the thing up and ran it up and down and it'll never bother I'm not worried about it making any kind of contact with that clutch this is as close as it'll ever get to it uh, but 
it is something I'm gonna have to keep an eye on and it would be better if I had two spacers in there to kind of get it out and away a little bit. But if you'll recall um, from the last video, I broke a few of those off to make sure that this chain would run square. So if I run it a while and it looks like it's starting to get into that clutch housing, you know, for its own, for its own good, I might have to actually uh, shim that clutch out another quarter inch and that would get it, uh, excuse me, that would get it clear of this uh, uh, bracket. Okay, the last thing here, about the easiest thing, is we have to take the air spring to put it in there. It's got a lock nut for the top. Got to bolt the threads in through the bottom. Ahem, I was saying threads through the bottom. And then we have to put this back on top. This is our fitting. Uh, before I go to plumb it up, I'll take and put some thread tape on that, seal it good and tight. Uh, so a little bit about leaks and kind of how they how they're going to play a, a factor here. Um, because I'm not running like the John Deere factory pneumatic down pressure, it's not going to automatically refill these bags for me as the day goes on. It's uh, going to be an old school uh, fill dump valve situation. So if I run it for and the air leaks out every two or three hours and I have to get out and refill the bags, that's going to get old. So keeping this system good and tight is going to be very important. So I'll tighten down those two bolts and I'll repeat this times uh, 10 more and then we'll get into the plumbing. So I've got all 12 airbags installed. Now it's time to plumb it up. So before I get started, I'm gonna get on my soapbox a little bit and talk kind of supplies. So this is quarter inch OD, uh, DOT approved brake line, air brake line. So that's actually what you're gonna use for uh, pneumatic down pressure. And that's true of a John Deere and also true of Case. The, the thing is, the true count tube is also a quarter inch OD, but it is eighth inch ID, whereas this is more than that. So the way this works, true count air, airline will work in these, but this airline will not work in the true counts because this, uh, the, the uh, ID of it, doesn't allow, it, it won't retain this. You shove it in and it pulls right back out. So, um, other thing you need to know, uh, do not buy this from John Deere, do not buy this from Case, do not buy it from a machinery dealer. Uh, find a truck supply place that sells it, or where I got all my stuff, and usually try to, like Master Car. So, all of these fittings, these airline fittings, you can buy them at a machinery dealership, and if you're in a jam in the middle of middle of season, that's where you need to buy them, because they've, they've got them on hand. But if you've got a day or two to wait, or you're overhauling a planter in the wintertime like I am, all of these things are, uh, don't kid yourself, anything that they, the stuff that they sell at a, at a dealership, it's all off the shelf. It's off the shelf from somewhere, right? It's not, you know, John Deere isn't building these things, and if they are, they're having them built for them by the same outfit that makes these. So save yourself about 90% of the cost of them, and uh, go to McMaster Car and figure out what you need. Uh, case in point is this dump valve. So this dump valve uh, for the pneumatic down pressure, if you buy that from John Deere, it's like $130. I've got $130 in all of this. All of the pneumatic stuff that I'm going to use for the PDP, it's all same price as this from John Deere. So if you're out of season and you have time, do it. Okay, just like we did with the true counts, we're gonna string these through the toolbar as cleanly as we can. I used green in this case so that it would be easy to tell at a glance uh, when you've got kind of a, a busy amount of shit on the toolbar, I can tell which one uh, belongs to pneumatic down pressure and which one belongs to the clutches. Uh, I'm gonna leave some slack in these. And the reason I am is when you work with this stuff enough, what you'll find when the fittings start to leak, in a lot of cases, 
what you can do is pull the airline out, cut an eighth of an inch of it off, and you'll be right back in business. The ends of these things get kind of hard and dried up. That's what makes them leak, but if you kind of, this is the right word, if you kind of freshen up that end, they'll work a lot better for you. So I want to leave, you know, at least a couple extra inches so that over the course of time, if I develop leaks, I can just bob it off and be good to go. Okay, as you can see, I've got the bag set up on each of the rows. I've got the brackets installed. Note you gotta run the uh, chains under and over and you actually have to flip flop these brackets. This cutout here is if you have pro drives, which I don't have chain drive. So uh, next thing I wanna talk through is the air system that's gonna run the clutches and is also gonna run the airbags. So what we got, are all off-the-shelf parts from the uh, McMaster car catalog. So here's what we're doing. Uh, I've got two gauges here. I've got tank pressure and I've got bag pressure. We're taking outlet from compressor and tank to tank pressure gauge and to this uh, three-way manifold that's gonna run the air to each of my three valve box modules. From here, uh, we run to a regulator, just a little Cute little regulator that's actually going to let me adjust adjust this pressure. Uh, my compressor is kind of low right now, and I don't want to crank it back up. But uh, this is where I'll actually be able to uh, increase it. So you can do without the regulator, but I used it for one reason, and that's that this stuff is not new. I don't see a lot of new on this planner. So uh, when the air components start to leak, I want this regulator to refill them as we go. Now, a factory setup won't have that. A factory setup will just have this dump valve. And that's actually how I started. So this is the fill position. And that's dump if I want to empty the bags out. So a factory setup, that's all it'll have. And when it's new, that's okay. Uh, I actually put 30 pounds in the bags and I let it sit for about six hours. And in six hours, it ran off from 30 down to about 20. So they do leak a little bit. I decided that, it, so on one hand, yeah, you could get out and basically, re, the way I had it the first time, refill the bags once or twice a day. I don't want to have to worry about that. So I've got a regulator. I put a check valve. So I'm really, I'm only regulating the pressure in this length of tube. Then there's a check. So I can't actually decrease the pressure with the regulator, but I don't need to. That, that's what this is for. Generally, you're going to run the air up to the level that you're happy with it. Um, when the pressure on this side gets lower, than the check because it's leaked off through the bags or whatever it'll let enough through for the two to equalize again and stop the flow so that's kind of the that's kind of the scheme of this um just in case you're wondering uh the angle iron i had laying around uh gauges all of the tubing that i bought for this planner the regulator um the dump valve the check uh all these little fittings plus a handful of spares, I think I've got $250 in. If you go buy this dump valve from John Deere, you'll have like 125 in that alone, to say nothing of, of gauges. So uh, you're definitely better off, said McMaster car catalog, uh, go through, take the time, find the pieces that you need to, to build what you wanna build. Uh, it's time and money well spent. Last thing I gotta do with this rig, uh, I put these two bars across there basically to make a, a place to coil up cables. You can see I've still got a lot of wiring left from the, the row flow module. That's the next project for this weekend, I think, is getting the getting everything plugged in where it goes, uh, getting the basically a, a hitch harness ran up through here and then consolidating them all. So I've got, you know, I'm already going to have, you know, seven or eight connections to be made uh, at the tractor, and we want that to be as clean and as simple as it can be. So... That's all for now. More to come.